why India's undersea nuclear power matters so much. Where the K-4 missile test leaves India in terms of nuclear deterrence and how this changes the SSBN scenario in India. Only a handful of countries can launch ballistic missiles from underneath the ocean surface. And with K-4 missile test, India has entered the elite strategic league. Hello everyone, welcome to Vajram and Ravi's Flash News. My name is Shubhangi Singh and today we are going to understand not just what exactly is K-4, why it is important, where it leaves us with nuclear deterrence, what our nuclear triad looks like with special reference to submarines and everything around it. So let us start with knowing more about the K-4 missile test that has happened. So India has just successfully test fired the K-4 which is a submarine launched ballistic missile. That means below the ocean surface where the submarine is submerged, it has been launched from that. The launch platform has been INS Arighat, which is the India's second nuclear powered ballistic missile submarine. Can you tell me in the comment section which is the first one? So when we are talking about the this launch, this becomes particularly special because this shows that India is fully operational for the range of not just 3500 kilometer, but it also confirms that it is operationally ready for any sea based nuclear deterrence. It is not just capable of managing a first strike, but handling the second strike as well. And this comes at a very important strategic time where not just escalation, but there is high intensity in terms of strategic upliftment, not just in Asia, but across Indo-Pacific and not only there, but globe as well. Now, so in this context, let us start with understanding that what exactly is this K-4 missile? So when we are talking about this particular missile, this is a nuclear capable, but it is a submarine launched ballistic missile. And when we are talking about submarine launch base ballistic missile, that means India has the capability to strike from beneath the ocean as well, where a nuclear power head can be delivered. This has been developed by Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. Recently, DRDO also got the applaud for testing Akash NG. You can go and learn about that in detail in the video. I have already covered that. When we are talking about this ballistic missile that is K-4, this is heavily derived from another variant of Agni that is Agni the third. But this one has been heavily redesigned and this has been made optimized for underwater cold launch operations. That means the submarine will not even come to the surface when it is launched. And this is a special part where we are talking about special K series which have been made and they have been dedicated to our president previous president, former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who is also known by the name of India's missile man. Now that we have understood what exactly is K-4, let us understand that what K-4 is doing for us, what are the technical and technological capabilities of K-4. So as I mentioned previously also that it has the operational range of almost 3500 kilometer and it is capable of delivering a nuclear warhead of the weight almost 2.5 tons. Whenever we are talking about the launch of a K-4 ballistic submarine missile, this missile can be ejected from the submerged silo. That is what exactly is the cold launch. And this is a missile which travels vertically through the water column. So let's just say this is the water column. It will travel vertically, then it will take the trajectory from there. Once it has crossed the surface, water surface if this is the water surface once it has crossed this that is when the ignition of specially rocket motors will take place and it has been specially designed so as to evade any sort of enemy detection and also interception so as to ensure that the strike if at all required by K4 that is successfully delivered and in order to do that the accuracy is also heightened here 
even after when the launch is coming from a moving platform and a submerged platform and all of this shows the fact that how india has transcended and mastered into an advanced underwater missile engineering atmosphere that has been created where ins aryaghat and then k4 missile and before that ins aryanth and we have many more additions coming forward as well now that i have mentioned ins aryaghat and aryanth now let us also try look into ins aryaghat and aryanth their ssbn capability so whenever we are using the term ssbn it is basically submersible ship ballistic nuclear capability so when we are talking about ssn it is submersible ship nuclear but ssbn is submersible ship ballistic nuclear when we are talking about ssbn it refers to a nuclear powered submarine which carries and also launches ballistic missiles which are capable of carrying nuclear warheads and when we are talking about ins arighat from which the k4 missile test has taken place this ins belongs to arihant class submarines associated with ssbns which have been in our country since 2009 can you tell me in the comment section which was the first ssbn of our country now so in this context especially ssbn because they are nuclear powered itself it is the nuclear propulsion which allows them to stay months in under water and there is minimum acoustic signature which is present and that is why they are built for strategic deterrence patrol they are not the ones which are responsible for attacks if you are talking about attacking submarines they are usually ssns and ssbns in our country are operated by indian navy the presence of ssbns across the ocean allows us continuous at sea deterrence for example at all there is a strike that take place on country we are capable of striking back so in this scenario the strategic deterrence is maintained by ssbns for warfare and active attacking it is usually ssns which are placed now let us look at the fleet that we have in terms of india's submarine so if we talk about nuclear powered ballistic missile submarines we have two as i said ins arighat and we have ins aryan if you talk about nuclear attack submarine that is ssn that is we have ins chakra then we have diesel electric submarines that means they are not nuclear powered they are ssk they are the ones which we have highest in number 14 two are of kalwari class then we have four of shishumar class and sindhu gosh class is eight so we have diesel electric submarine which are highest in numbers the nuclear powered ones as of now are limited but they are expected to be added in coming time now in this context let us move and understand that why all of this is an important factor when we are talking about nuclear deterrence why submarines are the ones which play a very important role in this very context so starting with understanding one very significant role of submarines itself that these are the ones which are which have the most of the possibility of surviving any nuclear platform so the first thing that comes important for us is the fact that submarines are the most survivable nuclear platforms so if in case of a condition where there is a strike submarines are expected to the highest probability would be that submarines will be able to sur survive that and that is not present with land bases or uh, air fields in this scenario ssbns cannot be easily targeted and that is why ssbns give us a assured second strike capability one of our nuclear facilities can be struck our air fields can be struck our missiles can be struck but ssbn which is survivable that will give us a second strike capability and that is why it is very important to have ssbns because they are the core of talking about credible minimum deterrence we are working on our nuclear capabilities the deterrence the production only to ensure 
minimum credible deterrence that we have enough to keep you away you should not come and fight with us and that is why it directly helps to reduce any sort of pressure especially of nuclear escalation during crisis so there is a very simple strategic logic to it that deterrence is very important and it will work only best if it is not stationed at one place if it is at petrol it is moving that is when deterrence will function and now this gives us a very simple strategic this comes with a very simple strategic logic that deterrence is only applica applicable you are saying ki we will make sure that this not happens it will only happen when there is some fear to it how will you make the, create the fear you'll create the fear by ensuring that your strike is guaranteed so if you do anything rest assured the second strike is coming from us and that is why deterrence works and in terms of nuclear deterrence ssbns are the ones which will actually be present for the second strike and that is why they play a very important role in nuclear deterrence now on this note let us understand that how k4 is going to add a layer in terms of their role to the india's nuclear triad so when we are talking about india as a country it basically as of now operates a fully functional nuclear triad that means we are capable of land based ballistic missiles we have air delivered nuclear weapons and we also have sea based slbms and when slbms are being talked about k4 has threatened this whole concealed leg of the triad and this is important because there was a gap we had short range k15 slbm and long range are being developed but what about the medium range so this is where k4 comes into the picture and this shows that we are enabled we are there there is a graduated and flexible nuclear response option that we have that we can use at our need and to also maintain the deterrence and i was i was saying that this makes india enter an elite club where already us russia china france and united kingdom are stationed unlike some powers india as we know maintains a no first use posture in this situation also k4 and it, its presence ensures that especially countries like china and pakistan deterrence against them is ensured it strengthens india as a responsible but a capable nuclear power we are very responsible about it but if need comes we are not hesitant to use it so india's deterrence is clearly based on defensive capabilities we are not expanding we are making sure our defenses are in place now on this note i'll be concluding let me know what are your thoughts on this i'll be leaving you with a practice question here you can put down your answers in the comment section the correct answer of the previous video here is a that was all from my side thank you so much